Well, on that day, we're in the Eagle Cap Wilderness area, and we'd made a base camp, and on this day, we were gonna move our camp to a higher elevation. It was late in the afternoon, weather had been declining, and that's when the accident happened. The first thing I noticed uh, is that my horse's neck was about to collide with my nose. So I reached out to try to grab my horse's neck to hold on so we didn't go backwards, and he spun uh, immediately to the left, 180 degrees, and, and I went flying. And my last conscious thought as I went off to the right and was in midair was, this is not going to end uh, well. It's been a year and a half now, roughly, since the accident. And when you come that close to losing your life, I think you develop a greater appreciation for what you have. The helicopter coming in when it did saved my life because there is no way in my condition they would have been able to get me out uh, alive any other way. When I go home, I get to go home knowing that, that I have impacted someone positively. I've made their, their bad day maybe a little bit better. That makes this a great job. That day, it was September 1st, and I was working in my room, and Wade was outside, just playing in the yard. I could see him through my bedroom window. And all of a sudden, I heard him crying outside. When I saw him, he was covered in blood. <laughs> and I ran back in the house, and I got a towel, and I went back outside and I pressed it to his forehead, and thankfully my husband showed up that at that time. We weren't sure what we had, but we could tell by the people around that it was, a, that it was an emergency and people were pretty, pretty excited. And there was Wade, a four-year-old little boy. He had been kicked in the face by a horse. But we were pretty worried about him. He began to you know, really lose consciousness, so we were, we were concerned. We called in report to the trauma center. They were waiting for us. When we landed, we rushed him into the emergency room and turned care over to them. On October 10th, I was out surfing in uh, Ecola State Park uh, and I was bitten by a great white shark. Uh, I had everyone on the beach come to my aid. I uh, was able to kind of instruct them on how to tie a tourniquet around my leg, use my leash. The ambulance transported me to another uh, parking lot where Life Flight landed and quickly got me on the, uh, the helicopter. When we arrived on the scene of Joe's accident, all I can remember is getting in the back of the ambulance and being told that there was a shark bite. As you know, we don't really know what we're going to as soon as we get there, and uh, it was a really unique call. I recently got the uh, opportunity to join Legacy's critical care transport team for the ECMO program. I am in the very beginning of my training. Uh, it's been kind of an ironic full circle for me. This experience as a patient was a uh, direct influence on me deciding to uh, pursue this opportunity and potentially maybe uh, applying to be a flight nurse down the road. My husband and I were over at Yahat's Inn for the weekend. We decided that we were going to go out for a dinner. We went up to the restaurant, went in, sat down, and five minutes later I was out. So we arrived at the restaurant that evening after a very long drive to uh, Yahat's. We were walking inside the building and I happened to look through the window and I saw Tracy slumped over uh, one of the tables. And I realized that Tracy wasn't breathing. I went ahead and helped lower her to the floor and asked my son to go get my wife, who is also a nurse. And uh, I opened up Tracy's airway. And about that time, my wife Angie arrived and uh, we started doing uh, CPR on, on Tracy. When she arrived, she had a cardiac arrest and her heart stopped. She had a condition called ventricular fibrillation at that time requiring a shock to her heart to get it restarted. The speed at which the transfer occurred was essential in her care and her recovery. Life flight is my lifesaver. Other than Dominic and Angie and my husband, if my husband wasn't acted out and Dominic and Angie weren't there and, and Life Flight wasn't here, I wouldn't have made it. There is no way I could have made it to a hospital and survived. 
Being in service in the aeromedical industry over 40 years has meant we've seen a lot of changes. Some of those changes we've uh, spearheaded. We started with one helicopter in the Portland metropolitan area, and today we have them throughout four states. We've put helicopters and aircraft in communities so that the response time to patients has been shortened. As rural hospitals are shutting down across the country, as rural hospitals are unable to provide the services they once provided, I think that you're going to see more and more need for air ambulance. There really are no words that you can use that adequately describe appreciation to those that you know have saved your life.